For several years now, I've been studying the designs of liquid-fueled rocket engines, and I think I am finally to the point now where I can start conducting my own tests. So, I have a good supply of old pipe fittings, and I think these pipe fittings right here will do a very good job for my first combustion chamber. So this first chamber is going to be very simple, and it's not going to be very good at thrust. However, my main goal for using this is to test my calculations of, and also my ability to control the intake of oxygen and fuel. In this case, I'll be using kerosene. I would like to use hydrogen, but hydrogen is difficult to get, so I will, I will build a kerosene compression system to also force kerosene into here. But this one would also help with testing methods to ignite the fuel and oxygen. So I think what will be best for now is to have an old spark plug and have an old coil from a car running that spark plug. And you know what? I think I might as well use some of my really vintage old spark plugs. I'm not going to use my nice champions on the first one. I'm going to use my split dwarf. These split dwarf spark plugs are actually quite rare and expensive. Brand new ones can go for like $50. However, this one is very cracked up in the, in the ceramic insulator. And it's looked like it's rusted for a long time. And then whoever I bought it from must have tried cleaning it off. But it obviously did not clean up very well. The threads are pretty much missing on all half of it. So, this will no longer work on an internal combustion engine. However, oh wait, no. I guess this is an internal combustion engine. Well, it will not run on an internal combustion engine that uses pistons. It'll have to run on my first liquid-fueled rocket engine chamber. Later on we can use this one, but this is my favorite spark plug. I just love how it looks, and so I want to give it a go. Plus, it has this little screw part, so it's a lot easier to connect a wire to it than the later ones that need that fancy connector for like a spark plug wire. So those spark plugs will be powered by these automobile coils, and now I've also bought several of these solenoid valves. They're rated up to 145 PSI. I'm hoping to run this with 100 PSI of oxygen at first. And I think this would allow me to trigger it from, from afar. So I can do this out in an empty field and I can be like 300 feet away. And plus this is AC, so AC travels a very long way. So I'm quite happy with this. However, I want to make the focus of this video just about drilling and welding anything we need to onto this engine. Oops. We will have the spark plug going in the center. And then we will have two pipes coming off the sides. I was wanting to do this, but we might not have enough room. Now if we were to move it over like that... Hmm, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, we could fit it. But it's very unsymmetrical and we probably end up melting it having an ununiform flame. Yes, look at that. So at the very least I can get it to where it fits to the part underneath the threads, so I'm not too upset about that. Might prove out to be better. Oh. So, if I put it here, then I won't be able to remove this piece because it'll hit the top of the spark plug, but what if I drill it at an angle like that? Oh no, not even at an angle. I just ground this to an angle. That might work. Something like that. that kind of cool. I like that quite a bit. Or, a better idea, yet again, get a longer section of pipe, twice as long, and cut it slantways, so, or sideways, or angled, so then each angle is exactly the same. Whoa, I was way off there. I guess I... I don't know what happened there. It's weird. So, let's get a small drill bit, a very tiny one, and drill two holes. I can always widen them later, but I just start off small for now. And then I can always weld around that. I can weld the pipes around those holes. 
the drill bit that I chose was a 3 seconds inch drill bit and I think it's like 2.5 or 2.4 millimeters wide so that's about I think a good starting point for the well I guess you could call these the the jets the injectors I made a little marks on the casing so it should be pretty easy to get a good nice distance between each one of these and the spark plug in the middle. I think that's probably the best way to do this. Have the spark plug in the middle and have the two meet at the spark plug. Or this could just turn the spark plug into a bullet and shoot it out. I'm not sure. That's why we're doing tests. Another thing I'll have to keep an eye out for is oil and having to clean the insides of these because, for instance, a lot of these new pipes have an oil or a grease inside of them that helps them from rusting. And I believe I will definitely need to remove that because in the in a 100% oxygen atmosphere, that might actually catch on fire and once again cause a huge big problem, possibly blow up my tanks, possibly even kill me. So I think that would probably be a good idea to make sure to clean these somehow which I might do a mixture of degreaser and then heat but I can look into that something I have looked into though is Teflon so evidently Teflon does not really burn that well in high oxygen it doesn't really change all that much at least the auto ignition temperature so it looks like I can still use Teflon tape on all these fittings and so it's gonna be perfectly fine in, in a 100% oxygen environment However, I have not looked up about kerosene, so whenever I build my kerosene pressurizer, I might need to use a different different sealer, but I'm pretty sure Teflon are working as kerosene. I'll look it up though. So now, I don't think I'm going to trust my big arc welder with this. I think I have to go get my MIG from my father, and then we can use that to get a more, well, a more precise weld on these pieces. So I've cleaned this up a good deal and the welds look pretty good. Well, they're a bit cold, but good enough for not welding in a long time with a MIG welder. And I'm pretty sure that they'll they'll keep a good seal, at least for a little bit. I mean, this entire thing is going to be a little bit leaky and it's my first rocket engine chamber, so com uh, combustion chamber, so what do you expect? Well, I'm definitely going to have to do a whole other video or multiple videos just on the plumbing. But I kind of want to see how this thing looks with the solenoids connected up to it. I am really happy with how that turned out. It's a bit funky looking, but oh well. We have somewhat okay welds. They'll be good enough for now. But it kind of matches the quality of the rest of it anyway. After all, it is just a couple pipes. So I'm very interested to see if a spark plug even has the capability to, to light kerosene. I might need to add like an atomizer or something to allow it to light. I think that's pretty much it for the chamber itself. I will want to add, I want, I'll, I want to drill a hole and have another pressure gauge coming off of it, but that'll be after a few tests. I think the next step would be to build a rocket engine test stand like this. So you have it towards pointing down like that, and then it hits that and the gases shoot out. 
and I'm planning on testing this in the creek so there will be water around it so if anything goes wrong there's plenty of water already around it. Well that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya.